I'm Dr. Jenani Krishnaswamy. I'm a physician trained in internal medicine. In addition, I have subspecializations in preventive medicine and lifestyle medicine. So migraines are a very common phenomenon, very, very intense headaches. The pathophysiology and a lot of exploration on why do people get migraines or what is the process underlying migraines appears to be this hypersensitivity to pain nerves within the brain itself. These are nerves that detect pain and inflammation on the blood vessels of the brain. In migraines, there appears to be an abnormal meter that's registering pain on these blood vessels even when there's no actual damage being done. Now, as a result of the brain sensing pain in the brain, it can actually generate more inflammation. So it's not uncommon for people with migraines to have certain markers be elevated um, that are inflammatory markers or have been told that they have a high inflammatory state or that there's something abnormal in their brain. However, when we start to look at the root cause of why are these pain meters turned up in the first place, we oftentimes find that that person, that brain has been under an, an intense amount of pressure in some form or fashion. It could be work-related, it could be intense stress in relationships, it could be a lot of fear. And again, migraines are legitimate, real, measurable phenomena we can see a migraine taking place in the brain, but we have to look at cause versus effect. The changes that we see in the brain are more likely to be the effect of an underlying root cause that's driven by chronic, persistent, unmanaged stress. The good news is when we learn to see that even though those symptoms are uncomfortable, unpleasant, and even debilitating, they do not signify permanent, irreversible damage in the brain. In many cases, when people have looked at the brains of, of, of individuals with migraines, many, many times they're a structurally normal brain. What we have seen and what we do know is that even though there is some uncertainty about what causes migraine in the first place beyond the underlying stress and tension, we do see very, very good outcomes with people using a primary pain approach to treating or co-treating their migraines. What we do see is when people start to use this approach of dialing down the fear as well as the dramatic significance that they're attributing to this migraine, they can start to regain their quality of life.